Hello and welcome to the next in a series of tutorials on NFTX, this time all about inventory staking. So we're going to have a look through the new rewards section here. We're going to look at the dashboard. We're going to look at the pools. Uh, we're going to have a look at how you can find the right pool for you to start staking and then the actual staking process itself. Now, there is already a liquidity staking tutorial, so we're not going to go into a lot of the liquidity side of things, but we will focus mainly on the inventory side of the staking. So if we come into rewards and let's have a look at the dashboard to start with. Once you've connected your wallet to nftx.io, um, you'll see your wallet connected up here. If we click on the amount here, you can see any of the tokens that you already have, as well as the ETH amount in your wallet. And you should be able to see your ENS name here or your wallet name. Uh, on the dashboard here, we've broken into two sections. The top section is the staked pools. So these are pools that you already have a staking uh, a staked amount in. And below that, are the unstaked balances. So if you have existing tokens associated with the vaults, as we could see uh, from here, uh, it will show you any of the ones that you don't currently have a stake. So you can quickly jump in here and you can stake your inventory amount here. We'll look at staking with tokens a little bit later. Uh, at the top of the staked pools, is a breakdown of your overall position, both in uh, Ethereum and in US dollars. And you've got a breakdown of the ones that you're staked in. The more blue purplish colors are the ones that you have a liquidity position in. And the more orange colors are the ones where you have a uh, staked position, like an inventory staked position in. If we have a look at the inventory staked positions here, I can open up Penelope's and I can see my current position, what the APR is on this particular vault, uh, what uh, rewards I have or how much I've staked and the rewards I have, what share of the pool that I have, and then how much time I have remaining when uh, with the lock uh, from staking my NFT. When you go to stake your NFT, if it's just inventory staking, then you have a seven day lock. If it is liquidity staking, then you have a 48 hours. So you'll see the time accounting down from there. Uh, once it is finished, you can unstake or you can always stake more as we move forward. So that's the dashboard. If we come across uh, to the pools, or before we have a look at the pools, we've also got another section here for activity. And this gives you an overview of what's been happening on all of the different vaults so far, um, the most recent activity. And you can filter it by how many buys have happened, what sells, what swaps, uh, and who's been supplying as well. It's a nice way to understand which vaults are getting lots of activity at any one particular time. Uh, if you look at supply, this shows you how many people are actually supplying. You can see quite a few staked on the PERS and the CAPS. Um, the supply side of things will probably dilute your position, uh, whereas swaps, buys, and sells all show you fee-generating uh, items. If we go across to the pools, this provides an overview of all the pools within NFTX at the moment. Again, you still have your activity on the side here. Um, you can check the available pools, which will show you just pools where you have NFTs. Uh, and then you can also sort by either the highest TVL, the highest APR, or alphabetical. So when deciding which pool that you want to start inventory staking in, you might change this to highest APR and then tick your available pools to work out which, uh, which particular sections are going to earn you the most yield. Uh, but it's up to you how you want to actually make those decisions, but this is a nice way to actually find those as well. One of the other things that you can do as well to work out which ones that you want to do, if we come back to highest TVL, as we scroll through, you can see a breakdown of each of the different vaults. So if we look at Punk, we can see the APR on inventory staking is 10.4% and on liquidity is 15.95. Um, these will vary depending on what action activity has happened and how many people are in each side of those pools as well. If we look at the stakers, we can see a breakdown of the proportion of inventory stakers versus liquidity stakers. Uh, and we can see how many fees have been generated in the past seven days as well. Uh, down the bottom, you've got the seven-day activity. 
So with the green, you can see how many buys, how many sells, which is red, and how many swaps, which is the blue color. Um, this gives you an idea of how many fee generating uh, transactions have happened on the vault. And it's uh, shown in proportion to the overall uh, number of holdings in the vault as well. So if we were looking at particular uh, items that we wanted to, or to find a pool where we wanted to do inventory staking, and we weren't worried about uh, just choosing one that we already have an NFT in, then we might look for areas or ones that have 0% inventory staking. Now you can come across, we've got a new uh, website, which is uh, academy.nftx.io. And if you come down into uh, staking, you can learn all about uh, what is a staker, choosing the right collections, what requirements you have in the risks. We also have a section on reward distribution as well, and they'll let you go and have a look at that. Um, but it breaks down how single-sided and double-sided, which is inventory versus liquidity staking works, and how those tokens are, are divvied out. Now, one thing to take note of is that if there is 0% in inventory staking, so if you are the only inventory staker, you will get a full the full 20% of the fees generated. So inventory staking get 20% of all the fees and liquidity get 80%. So if you're the only one in this single-sided uh, inventory side, then you get all 20% of those fees. So sometimes it's a nice way of getting lots of fees if there's gonna be activity on the vault. Uh, but you can see here for something like Sandbox, there's been no activity and there's no inventory fees. Um, what you can do is you only need the smallest fraction of inventory staking. You don't need to buy an entire NFT and contribute that to be one of the stakers. You can put in 0.001. Um, but as soon as someone else comes into that pool, you will lose uh, the, the whole 20% and you will just get a portion of the pool. And you can see an example of that uh, back here where uh, on the caps, um, I bought a 0.001 cap to put in to get the full uh, 20%. And then someone came in and put a couple of NFTs and my pool share is now next to zero. So you can do that, but just be warned that if you do put in a small amount, if someone does put in more inventory, you will get diluted out of there. Uh, so yeah, scrolling through, you can find, it's a good idea, you can find ones that um, don't have any uh, inventory at the moment or ones that have low inventory, which means you get more of a share of that 20% of fees that are generated. One thing to remember that when you are looking uh, at ones that have 0% inventory, the first time that someone adds inventory staking, you are setting the pool up. So there is a slightly higher gas cost to being the first inventory staker than it will be being an inventory staker for something that already exists as well. So do take that into consideration when you're doing it. And if you notice that the gas fee for adding inventory is really high, it's probably because you are the first one. So we are gonna select available pools. Um, or the other thing you can do here as well is you, if you know what, you've, what you're after, you can just type into the search bar as well here. So we are going to uh, do some inventory staking for the space poggers. So here as an example, I'm going to stake some poggers. So when we get to the stake page, these are all the poggers that are currently inside my wallet. And I'm gonna to choose to stake a couple of duplicates that I have. I have a couple of penguins uh, and I have a couple of cats. So I'm gonna select these three poggers. Now I can either choose, by default, it is on the inventory staking and you can see what share I'm getting in the pool. So that's the share of the 20%. Um, then I could also go to pogger-eth, uh, which will be liquidity provision where you need to put ETH in as well. So at least with pogger, you don't have impermanent loss, um, but with this, you have the chance of impermanent loss. Um, here I'm getting 3.7 or 3.8% of the total pool for the liquidity staking. And here I'm getting 18% um, and I'm locked up for seven days. So we've already done the approval. Um, so we can do the stake. Now what I'll do is I'll just say stake. Now, uh, one note that we have is that you're putting these in the vault. Anyone can then take them from the vault. Uh, people can shop and buy and swap 
uh, your NFTs once they're in there. You're not guaranteed to get the same ones out, but while you have uh, tokens, you can still claim them back. You can claim any NFT from the vault. But there is just a note here, when we put this in, we're getting three poggers. So we're staking three poggers, but it actually costs 1.05 poggers to random redeem a NFT from the vault. So when I put three in, I would actually need 3.15 pogger tokens to get three whole NFTs back out. And that's how it is at the moment. One thing we're looking at doing is to incorporate a way that if you have staked items in here that you will bypass the random redeem fee so that staking three poggers will allow you to get three back. When we say, I understand, and then a gas cost will come up. Now, the more poggers that you uh, decide to stake, the more expensive the gas will be, uh, but it's uh, incremental uh, as it goes up. So this is uh, for three, it is 0 0.07 at the moment. If we look at the gas cost, it's like 135. Uh, if I was to reject that, and if we were just to select the one pogger to stake, then it's 0 0.44. Um, so one, 0 0.4, when you get to three, it's 0 0.7. Once you, the more that you choose, the more expensive it will be, but it's not doubling each time. Um, for each additional uh, pogger that you put in. So I'll come back, I'll rechoose uh, those ones again. So a penguin, a cat, and a dog, I think it is. And we will say steak. And 0 0.05 and confirm. So that transaction was successful and now we have a link to go to the staking page. So I can click go to staking, which will take me back to the rewards and dashboard. And we can see now that Poggers has been added to the listings here. And I can come in and I can see that I've got three Poggers uh, staking rewards. I have a pool share of 18.75%. And my total time uh, left in the lock is 168 hours, which is seven days. Um, as, uh, as I earn additional uh, fees, that will all get compounded into my inventory position. Whereas when you earn fees with liquidity, the fees come in here and you need to claim those fees as you go, but everything else gets rolled into here, which is great. So now that we have staked our poggers, we can see them in here. We can see these are the three poggers that were staked in the activity. Now we're gonna look at what happens if I want to stake uh, tokens only. So it's great to be able to, if I go to available pools, these are the ones that I already have NFTs for. But what happens if I wanted to stake something like Punk? Right? So Punk is a really high value item. Uh, I don't have the ETH to be able to go and buy a Crypto Punk to inventory stake. Uh, I don't have the, the spare 60 or 70 ETH for that. But I do want to get involved in the ability to uh, stake inventory for it and earn 10% APR. So what we can do in that case is that we can go and acquire some punk tokens and then come back and deposit those punk tokens as inventory in the staking section. So to do that for any vault, you can come across to the sushi pool or come across to the info tab and go through to the sushi pool. And here it's offering you to uh, swap punk. So what we want to do, um, you might say, well, I want to do this with uh, one ETH worth. Right, I want to invest one ETH into Punk and earn the 10% APR on that. So if I say one ETH, that buys me back 0 0.0150123 Punk tokens. And once I've bought those tokens, I can then go and stake them. Now at the moment, I have an insufficient, uh, insufficient amount of money there. So we'll switch across to a different wallet where I have a small amount of Punk token to continue. So I've changed wallets now to one where I have purchased uh, a little bit of punk. So if we look here, I've got 0 0.008 punk tokens sitting in there. So if I come into stake now, we can see that that punk token is sitting in there. So by having punk tokens in here and going to the stake page, we can then click on this and then we can choose to stake that amount as inventory. So I'm going to say approve and the approval has a small cost. 
now that transaction has gone through okay, we can now go and stake that amount. So I'm gonna say max and we're gonna say stake. Now, when we're staking tokens, the cost, the gas cost is a lot lower. When we're staking NFTs for inventory staking, that NFT gets added to the vault, a ERC20 token is minted and gets sent back to you, and then that token is put into the inventory staking. So the whole process takes a few transactions in the background, which is why the gas cost is a little higher. For tokens themselves, where we've bought the Punk token, that ERC20 already exists. So all we're doing is putting that into the inventory pool. So it is cheaper. So we come through and confirm, and we've got this on a ledger, and send that through. And there we go, that transaction uh, was successful. I could now come across to my dashboard Remember, this is a different wallet, so we won't see all those other areas there. And if you come across immediately, one thing that you may notice occasionally is that your staked item won't be there right away. Sometimes it takes a little time for the, um, uh, for the graph to catch up and index. So if you come across and you don't see it there, it's absolutely fine. Uh, it will be there. You can view your transaction on Etherscan to confirm that it's there. It does just take a minute to update the index. One thing to also notice that you won't actually see any activity for this kind of inventory staking. So when you're staking just tokens, uh, it doesn't count towards the activity itself. Um, so you won't see it pop up there. I mean, you can see yesterday there was a punk that was bought and a punk that was sold a couple of days ago. Um, so these are fee generating items. Now I'm going to get a portion of that uh, pool now um, because I uh, put in so little, I'm not getting much of a portion at all, but you can see the value of that staked position there. So that is about everything that we need to take a look at. Um, remember we went through, we had a look at our rewards section with the new dashboards and pools. Uh, we went through how to find the right kind of uh, NFT to start staking, where you can look at the size of the pools um, and also look at the APRs and how they're going as well, plus checking out the activity of what has been going on in the different vaults. Uh, we looked at how you can stake using an NFT specifically and also how you can stake using some of, your, uh, some of the vault tokens as well. Uh, if you have any further questions that you might not uh, might want to know, you can click on the help section in the bottom left hand side of the site and ask away here, uh, or you can visit us on Discord on discord.gg/nftx and ask any questions that you have through support. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.